Good morning. Got a few of us in here. We've got more people outside that are going to be coming in in just a minute. We are here. It's 1030. We're in the presence of God. I'd like to invite all of you to stand up and worship the Lord together with us. We've got a new song to share with you today. Let's go and praise the Lord. One, two. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul. try with all my mind, I just can't win the fight, I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond, just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, he told me that I was not alone. morning and welcome to Pathfinder Church and welcome to this time of worship. We come here this morning to say simply, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God for so many things. I thank God for God's faithfulness in our lives every single day. For God's amazing grace he gives to us, and for God's deep love, unconditional love that he has for every one of us, I thank God. I've got a verse I want to share with you. It comes from Psalm, Psalm 106. It says this, praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
His faithful love endures forever. And we come here today in God's presence with those words on our lips. I thank God. We come here today to worship with hearts filled with gratitude. We come here to take all that and give it to God in worship and bow down before him. We're going to continue to worship the Lord now. If you're joining us online, we're glad that you're with us. We ask that you leave a comment, especially if you're on Facebook Live, that you drop a comment and say hi so that we all know that you are here. Let's all go before God, thank him, and worship him together. One, two, three, four. Let's sing. Praise him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise him, you angels and heavenly hosts. Let the whole earth praise him. Praise him, the sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise him, you heavens and waters and skies. Let the whole earth praise him. Great in power, great in glory, great in mercy, King of heaven, great in battle, great in wonder, great in Zion, King over all the earth. Praise Him, you heavens and all that's above. Praise Him, you angels and heavenly hosts. Let the whole earth praise Him. Praise Him, the sun, moon, and bright shining stars. Praise Him, you heavens and waters and skies. much 
fetch wine I will worship you So I throw up my hands Praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know it's not much I've nothing else been for a king Except for a heart singing Hallelujah Hallelujah Oh, come on, my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you got a lot Please have a seat. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I got a few announcements. My first announcement is if you have youth, bring them to the walk ministry tonight because we are meeting at 6 p.m. And I would love to see their faces. We have family camp July 21st through the 28th. I think Christina would love if you RSVP by March 3rd. Oh, never mind. MT would love that, though. Um, these are our blessing bags. Um, they are out in the gathering area. It comes with a water bottle, hand warmers, crackers, a Slim Jim, and a little note. And we encourage you to take them just so you can hand them out to people in need. Next Sunday, we are asking you guys to bring pre-packaged grains for our offering. Um, there are some examples, rice, oats, um, flour, cornmeal, and we are going to give those donations to 12 baskets. And look in your bulletin for the rest of the announcements that you miss. Kids are now excused to go to worship. Ashley, I'm a, I'm a kid at heart, so can I come to youth group tonight? <laughs> so every week I get up here and talk to you about giving. Let me take you to make a little twist on it and tell you a story from my past. This is a true story. It happened to me. I experienced it. And it gave me an example that I've never forgotten about giving in a wrong way. Some years ago, I was on the staff as the youth leader at a uh, inner city downtown Lexington, Kentucky church. Our church had a food pantry even back in those days. A little different from how things are done now, but we got a call one day for a large donation of food, and I was asked to ride along with the person that was going out to pick that up to give them some help because they said, well, it's a lot of food. So I went out uh, from that downtown church into a very nice part of Lexington, a beautiful home, and found that there was a pantry full of food. 
and it was canned goods, homemade canned goods. And in those days, that was not a problem to donate those things. And this lady wanted to donate them, but she began to have donator's remorse. Because as she saw us begin to take the uh, food, she began to reevaluate, and this is how she made a determination as to what was given versus what stayed with her. Oh, that one's no good. You can have that one. Oh, this one's still good. Put that over there. And she literally separated all the food out between that which was spoiled and that which was still good. It was hard to say thank you for your kind donation to our food pantry, but we took that back to our church straight to the dumpster and threw it away because it was all rotten. Giving. Giving is critical. I used to hear a song sung in my church, give of your best to the master. When you give and I give to this church, however you do it, all those ways that are on the screen there, that doesn't matter. What matters is, are you giving your best or that which is no good for even you? God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would bless our giving, that we would give that which you've given to us, which is your best in our life. All that we have, especially our life itself, is your best in Jesus. We pray it in his name. Amen. We're going to sing, and I'd like to invite you to stand up as we sing and worship the Lord. If you were here last week, um, you might have remembered that you all came up to the front and gave a little stone here as a chance to build an altar and to surrender yourself. And we're going to continue to talk about that theme over the next few weeks, the idea of surrendering ourselves to God. So this is our chance to do that as we prepare to hear the message today. Let's worship the Lord. Giving you my heart and all that is within, I lay it all down for the sake of you, my King. I'm giving you my dreams, I'm laying down my rights, I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life. And I surrender all to you, all to you. And I surrender all to you, all to you. I'm waiting at the cross And all the world holds dear I count it all as loss For the sake of knowing you For the glory of your name To know the lasting joy Even sharing in your pain
Good morning, beloved. Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For all of you who are watching online right now live with us, welcome to you as well. And for anyone who might be watching later on in the week, we welcome you as well. We are glad that all of you are part of our church family. We are in our second week of our Lent sermon series entitled Altered, the Transforming Power of Surrender, uh, based on the devotional by Susan Kent. For those of you, I I hope you are reading along. Uh, And for those of you who ordered books um, a little bit later, the the books have come in and they are available at the Connect Desk if you haven't picked yours up already. Um, Today we're going to talk about surrender. We we just sang a song about it. (laughs) Surrender it all. That's what we're going to talk about today, surrender it all. And we're going to use a text that is um, very familiar and, and perhaps quite troublesome for many of us. Uh, it is the story of Abraham and Isaac and the sacrifice of Isaac. And so uh, we're going to jump right in with that. Uh, we're in Genesis chapter 22. It's in your notes. You can follow along in your Bible if you'd like as well. Genesis chapter 2, we're going to read the first two verses, and then we're going we're to skip some of the minutiae and jump down to 6 through 14. So here we are. Uh, sometime later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. Take your son, your only son. Now, folks, I want you to think about this. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. Hmm. So they did some stuff and packed up and started on their way, and then we pick it up here at verse 6. So Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them walked on together, Isaac turned to Abraham and said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. We had the fire and the wood, the boy said, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering, my son, Abraham answered, and they both walked on together. When they arrived at the place where God had told him to go, Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood on it. Then he tied his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to kill his son as a sacrifice. And at that moment, the angel of the Lord called out uh, to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Abraham replied, here I am. Don't lay a hand on the boy. The angel said, do not hurt him in any way, for now I know that you, are tru- that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me even your son, your only son. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in it by its thorns in a thicket. So he took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering in place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God indeed. Wow, what a story, huh? What a story. Today's theme is this. God calls us to surrender our control and demonstrate our commitment through obedience. Through obedience. God calls us to surrender our control and demonstrate our commitment through obedience. There's that O word again, obedience. It keeps popping up. All for the last two years, it seems like every time we turn around, O, oh, obedience shows up. So last week, we, um, we introduced the idea of being altered here at this altar, right? And we began to build it by stacking our stones, just like the ancient people did. The ancient people of Israel, they would bring and they would, they would stack up some stones, and they specifically they were told to use uncut stones, so none of this is, is cut or prepared ahead of time. Uh, and, and they would um, build a space for worship and surrender. And for those of us who attended Ash Wednesday service, we also began our commitment to submission or surrender by, by being repentant and, and receiving the ashes uh, of commitment uh, to the Lord and, and remembrance of what he did for us uh, at Easter. And this, this week we're called to take another step of surrender, and, and we'll get to that in just a few minutes. In addition, we will learn a little bit about the first type of sacrifice called the burnt offering, 
uh, that the Hebrew people used to be reconciled with God, okay? So first, the story. I want to tell you a story. Um, when I was just a little toddler, uh, I don't know how old, uh, probably three years old or so, I was just a little toddler. Uh, we lived in a, um, in a house trailer on the property of my great-grandmother, Alverda Graham Wolfgang, who spoke like this and um, was very, very German, um, up on what we lovingly call Wolfgang Mountain in Ashland, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's uh, not its real name, uh, but on that side of that mountain, a whole bunch of Wolfgangs lived. And so it became lovingly known as Wolfgang Mountain. Um, anyway, uh, it, 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 as my mother tells the story, I don't remember this happening. I, I was too young to remember it, but my mother has told me several times just to remind me um, uh, about the story. So mom's outside. She's doing some laundry on the, on the lines out there. Uh, yes, ladies, they didn't have those little things called dryers in those days. They, they hung their stuff outside. Um, they, uh, mom was out there doing the laundry, and I was out playing in the yard with the dog, and, and off ran the dog into the woods on that side of that mountain. And, um, of course, you know, being the toddler, I followed the dog, you know. And so once mom realized that I had walked away, she started calling for me, Donald! Yeah, mom, I would answer. Stay right where you are, she would say. Okay, mom, came the response from yours truly. But you wouldn't you know it, I just kept right on walking. You know, just kept walking. I, I would keep walking down that mountain. I was not being obedient. She said this went on for more than an hour and a half, where she would call my name, I would answer. So she knew I wasn't too far away, but she would hear me answer. She would tell me to stand still, but I wouldn't. I would I'd say, yes, Mom, I'm, I'm standing still, but then I would just keep walking on down the mountain. Now, Mom knew something about that mountain that I didn't know, that it's filled with snakes and bears and wolves, okay, on that mountainside. Uh, and at the off chance that I made it all the way down that, you know, that slow slope going downhill, it wasn't a great drop-off or anything, it was a slow slope going downhill, but if I'd made it all the way down to the bottom, there was a strip coal mining region right down at the bottom of the, of the, the mountain and then the highway that ran right through the middle of the, the valley there. Anyway... Uh, all's well, it ends well. She finally caught up to me, uh, and I'm pretty sure I became the not-so-proud owner of a blistered bottom in that moment. We could use some more of that these days. I'm sorry, I didn't say that out loud. Uh, and as I said before, I don't, remember, um, I don't remember the incident, but my mother has shared it with me several times. So, um, Mom, if you're listening, make sure I got it right, will you? So how about it, beloved? How about it? Uh, have your children done something similar to you? When you call your children, do they get up immediately and respond to you? Do they come running? Or is there a delay? Or maybe even resistance on their part. You know, you tell Susie, Susie, get the dishes done. Oh, mom. Oh, mom. How many times has your teenager been told they have to clean their bedroom? Uh -huh, I see some laughing back there. Uh huh. Okay. When you tell them to get off the Xbox to do their homework, are they Johnny on the spot that they get right off and get right straight to homework? Or does it take a few more times of admonition and perhaps a little persuasion? All right. Well, I tell Bubba, I, oh, he's not in here. He must have ran off on me. When I tell Bubba, <laughs> he knew it was coming. That's why. I tell Bubba to take out the trash. His usual response is something like, what's in it for me? What will I get? And my report or retort to him is something like, you get to live here. <laughs> right? You get to live here. Um, so, so I guess the big question about all of that stuff and, and about my little story uh, is, what does that have to do with our text for this morning? Right? And, and I will say to you, in a word, Obedience. In a word, obedience. When God calls his children, how do we respond? God calls us to surrender our control and demonstrate our commitment through obedience. Okay? So today we have a story, as I said earlier, that just kind of wreaks havoc with our modern day sensibilities. Now, and, and, and before we lose our minds over the ideal of child sacrifice, I just want us to take a little bit closer look at the text. So when God calls, the first thing we need to do is take the first step. 
And that comes in verse 1. Some time later, God tested Abraham's faith. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, here I am. See, Abraham valued his son over everything else in the world. Isaac was the son of the promise. You can read about this, you know, starting at Genesis 15 all the way through to where we are at now. Isaac was the son of the promise. Years and years, decades, he and Sarah, then known as Sarai, uh, waited for a child. God had promised them one, but they just waited and waited and waited. They tried to take matters into their own, hand, their own hands. That didn't work out too good either. But Abraham finally received the covenant promise uh, from God that they would bear a son. And, and, and they finally had that son. And now what, what gives? Abraham was going to be asked to surrender it all, surrender his son. But there's a hint in the text that helps us with this very delicate situation of child sacrifice. And, and, and first of all, let me say this to you all, uh, that child sacrifice was a very real thing back in ancient days. It was practiced pretty much worldwide, and especially in the Middle East. Okay? Many Middle Eastern cultures practiced child sacrifice. And in fact, while we were in Israel this last time, well, and actually both times, uh, we were able to see an altar that most scholars believe was used for such sacrifices. Here's a picture of what it looked like. And you can look at it. You can see stairwell going up here on, on, on that side. And it's round in shape, okay? And it's actually pretty tall because I went down and just stood next to it. Uh, and it came up to about right here on me. So, I mean, that's, that's a tall altar off the ground. And most scholars will tell you that this was used by the local people that lived there at the time for child sacrifice, okay? When I went near the altar, I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not, oh, what's the word? I don't know, embellishing, whatever, however you want to say it. When I went near that altar, the, the hair on my arms and the back of my neck stood up, okay? It just, it's just an eerie place, okay? Okay? Uh, this, this altar is found in Tel Megiddo. And what is a tell? A tell is a mount. It's a man-made mount that was built up over centuries and, in, and actually, in this case, millennia. It's built up. You know, one society lives there for a while. It gets destroyed. It, someone else builds over top of it. Someone else builds over top of it. And so on and so on over, over the millennia. And what they discovered was that they dug 32 cultures down at this tell. 32 different societies lived in this area before they finally got to the base, the bedrock, which is where that altar was. It was buried underneath all those societies that whole time. 32 layers. Uh, so it's very, very ancient, long before the Hebrew people ever lived there. Okay, so this was people that, that were there before the Hebrew people ever lived there. And the key here to this, to understanding this idea of child sacrifice, and what God called Abraham to do uh, is told to us by the author in advance. Abraham doesn't know it, okay? But it's told to us. And that is in the very first line, some time later, God tested Abraham's faith. Now, Abraham doesn't know this is a test. At least I don't, we can't tell if he knows or not, right? But God is testing his faith, what is that saying? That says that God never intended for Abraham to actually go through with the sacrifice. God isn't expecting Abraham to really sacrifice his son Isaac, but he wants to test Abraham's obedience to him. God would never, ever allow children's sacrifice, ever. Okay? So, so before we lose it over this idea, we got to recognize that God does not permit the sacrifice of children at all. And it was never meant for Abraham to finish the task, as we'll find out in a few minutes. Okay? Simply a test of Abraham's commitment to be the father of the nation who would become God's people. Is Abraham ready to become that person? That's what the test is. So now back to Abraham and God's request. Abraham's initial response, here I am. You know, God calls him. He simply says, here I am. He doesn't know. He doesn't know the depth of what God wanted from him. He doesn't know 
even what God wanted in the first place. He simply states, here I am. And, and the Hebrew word translated here is hineni. Hineni, from the, the root word hine, okay? And hine is a big word in Hebrew. Hine means, lo, behold, here. It, it's, it's like an emphatic word, here I am. When you add the suffix ne on the end of hine, you get hine, ne ni, I've got to say it right, hine ni, which literally means here I am. Look, I'm here, I'm ready to respond when you call. Tell me what to do. How many of us can say, lo, behold, here I am, <laughs> when God calls us? As a child of God, Abraham listened and responded immediately without hesitation. Not like our children who evade, run away, and hide, or just outright ignore us when we call them. And I might even sheepishly say or suggest that not like us when we do the likewise with God's calling on our lives and we kind of ignore it. Okay? So the first step of experience, the transforming power of surrender, is to show up and be ready to respond. Do not run away or ignore God's call, and then we will be ready to commit. That's the next thing you want to hear out of this, full commitment. God expects a full commitment. Okay, Verse 2, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. God was showing Abraham what a full commitment to following him would mean. He told Abraham to sacrifice his beloved son Isaac as a burnt offering. So first, we must understand what a burnt offering is and what it was meant by that and how it was conducted. So if you go to Leviticus chapter 1, it's all about burnt offerings, Leviticus chapter 1, and it tells us that the animal chosen as the burnt offering was to be the very best, the most valued, without flaw or blemish. It was supposed to be number, you know, Pastor Ron talked about you know, the woman who gave her wasted, old, nasty food as a donation, that's not acceptable to God. He needs the best. And so if you came to bring a burnt offering, you would bring the very best bull you had in your tribe. You would bring the very best lamb or, or ram. And you would bring, and if you were really poor and you couldn't afford any of that, you would bring two turtle doves or two pigeons. Whatever it was, okay, you know, the wealthy families, they could afford the, the bigger stuff. And then the interesting thing is, that I, as I told the Wednesday group uh, that's meeting, the, the interesting thing about the sacrifice then is, let's say there's the bull there, right, and, and the, the tribe leader, the, the tribe is sacrificing the bull on their behalf, and the tribal leader would come up and he would lay hands on the bull's head as a sign of, of, of you know, acceptance uh, and, and passing on the sins of the tribe to the bull so that the bull might be sacrificed on behalf of them. And so uh, this whole idea, and, and I know this is going to sound really strange to us because, again, as modern-day people, this sounds really strange to us, but it's very, very biblical, dear friends. The enduring principle of payment for sin is a life for a life. Did you hear that? The enduring payment of sin is a life for a life. So what does that mean? It means that that bull's life had to be sacrificed in order that the people would, could live a life of atonement. A life for a life. Okay? That's what it means. It's also why Christ was the perfect sacrifice, his life for our lives. A life for a life. Now, praise God, because of Christ, there are no more requirements for a life for a life. Except to say, we are to sacrifice our lives toward God, our living, daily living towards God. So this is kind of uh, the sacrifice that Abraham is called to make. Certainly the object of his sacrifice was the very best he could offer. It was his son. Romans 12, 1, which leads into what I was just saying, which we mentioned last week also, tells us to sacrifice ourselves, our bodies, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. Here it is right here. Look at this. And dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. In response to what God has done for you, we offer ourselves 
Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Our worship is offering ourselves in a sacrifice. Okay? The Lord is not asking for part of our lives. He's not asking for our, just our Sunday mornings. Like a burnt offering, we are to give God our whole lives, our whole selves, a full commitment. i got a question for you. If you professed your faith in Jesus and responded through baptism or declared your commitment as a disciple, what did that mean to you? What did it mean to you when you took your baptismal vows? A 10% financial commitment? Choosing to serve once a month when it fits your schedule? Or did it mean that you were all in? Every day. A full surrender to God. This is the act of commitment without condition. It is through our surrender, beloved, that we encounter the transforming power of God and then are able to live a faith that endures. So the last thing I want you to hear out of this text is finding faith. How did Abraham find faith? How do we find faith out of this text? Finding faith, verse 14. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yaira, which means the Lord will provide. We're we're used to calling it Jehovah Jireh, it's the same thing. Yahweh Yireh, Jehovah Jireh, same thing. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. You know, after Abraham gathered up all the the supplies needed for the sacrifice, he and Isaac and some servants, they took off heading towards this Mount Moriah where God was sending them. And when they got about three days out from Mount Moriah, Abraham said to the servants and everybody else that was with him, stay here, guys. The the boy and I, we're going to go to the mountain, and we're going to make our sacrifice, and then we'll come back. And and so off they go, Isaac carrying the wood. I hope that gives you a vision. Isaac carrying the wood upon which he would be sacrificed. What does that sound like? Say it louder. Jesus. Jesus carrying the cross right? Yeah. So they're on their way to Mount Moriah. That's where God sent them. Now, here's something that most of us don't know, and I absolutely love, love, love this. Nothing is by chance with God. Nothing is by chance. We know that Mount Moriah by a different name today. Anyone know what it is? Anyone? It's called Mount Zion. Mount Moriah and Mount Zion are one in the same. The place where the Temple Mount sits is the very place where God took Abraham and Isaac to test him with the sacrifice. It's the very place that God sent his own son, Jesus, there to be the sacrificial lamb for each and every one of us. Isaac was spared because God provided the ram. Jesus was not. He suffered as the sacrifice for humanity. Abraham's faith was bolstered in that moment and on that mount when when God delivered up Isaac and saved him by providing the ram. He was so bolstered in his faith that he he declared the place, Yahweh Yaira, the God will provide, or the Lord will provide. And the author goes on to say that to this day, people on that mountain of the Lord will be provided. Well, boy, isn't that true? Because on that very mountain, (laughs) the world was provided with the Son of God and the Son of Man all at once. So how will we approach the altar today? How will we approach the altar today? What will we surrender Where and what have we created as a space to declare our belief in God's provision and to be expectant of the encounter? Where have we committed ourselves without condition, believing in the faithfulness and goodness of God? So when you walked in, you should have picked up a candle. If you do not have a candle, raise your hand. We will send someone to you with candles. All right? Hannah? Can I get you to bring some candles up here front, please? Everybody should have a candle. 
If you don't have one, just raise your hand, and the ladies will bring you one up, okay? So Hannah, uh, Miss Ann back there. And the Dykstra's right here. Yep. Keep your hands up, guys, so they can see you. All right? All right, they're bringing them up. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, ladies. All right. So here's what we're, we're going to do, okay? Here's what we're going to do. Since we learned about burnt offerings today, I invite you to come forward, bring your candle. Pastor Ron and I will light it up here at the altar, and then you can place it on the altar wherever you want. We're going to lay our candle down on the altar. Now, this candle represents something of great value to you that you must surrender to God. Okay? None of us will know. It, this is up to you. This is between you and God. Bring it up. We'll light the candle as a burnt offering to the Lord, and we'll place it on the altar. Okay? What could it be? Let me just give you some suggestions. It might be your children. Maybe you've been praying for your children for decades, and you want to lay them at the feet of Jesus on his, on his altar. Maybe it's caring for your parents. Um, maybe it's, maybe you've got to give up some social media. Surrender that to the Lord. Maybe it's, it's your words that come out of your mouth. Maybe we've we got to give those up sometimes right? It can be any, anything that is important for, enough for you to come say, Lord, I give this to you. I need to give it up, okay? I need to surrender it to you. It can be a good thing or a bad thing, friends. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can be a good thing, too. I, I surrender up the care of my children to you, you know? The, all those kinds of things, it's, it's a good thing or a bad thing. I want you to come and light a candle and turn it over to God. So hear this. This story would have been very different if Abraham had built an altar before he had a son. You know, praying in desperation. He comes to the altar every day and prays, offering a sacrifice in exchange for provision. Lord, please give me the son. The son of, the, no. You know, we often share stories about someone who's down to their last dollar uh, and God provides miraculously through a check in the mail or, or groceries on the porch. I've, I've even shared that with you when I was going to seminary, how money just showed up at my door, right? But Abraham's bank account was completely full. This is the difference in the story here. Abraham had everything he could possibly need. He had, he had servants. He had all the animals he needed. He had wealth. He had a son of the promise. He had a wife that loved him. He had everything he could possibly need. But he was willing to commit all he had, not out of desperation, but out of obedience. Abraham surrendered what was most valuable to him without condition, and his blessing came through his full commitment. His blessing came through his full commitment. Amen? God calls us to surrender our control and to demonstrate our commitment through obedience. So I would invite you now, Pastor Ron, I invite you to come up and, and the praise band, um, well, you, Steve, you're going to play for me, right? Okay. So I would invite you all to come up as you see fit, as you are led, and Pastor Ron and I will light your candle. And then you can place it anywhere you want on the altar. You can place it up here. You can place it all along there, wherever you want to put it. But I would encourage you to come and light a candle and turn that over to God. Would you come as you are led? Please. Let me come down here. Turn your candle on. In fact, you know what? Let me do it because I don't want to burn your fingers. I think you will notice that some of the candles were, will burn brightly very quickly. Some of the candles will struggle to even be lit. I think that tells something about the truth of ourselves. 
that some things we'll be able to give up easily and some things we're going to have to fight to give up. give it to the Lord it is a burnt offering that is a sweet smelling odor to the nostrils of God says the Bible when we give ourselves up to him when we surrender to him it is a sweet fragrance that he cherishes Ages are welcome to do this, by the way. Children as well. give up, whatever they may be, whatever we need to surrender. And this is very pleasing to God.
miss anyone? One last thing I want to share with you before I turn over to Christina and the praise and prayer time. Um, A word about next week's offering. I want to repeat this because I want to make sure nobody misses out. Uh, We will be learning about the grain offering next week in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 2. And as such, we will be making a grain offering here at the altar. And so we would ask you to bring one new, brand new package of the following. It can be rice. It can be lentils. It can be oats. It can be wheat, barley, grits, corn, rye, quinoa. Can't say it. Quinoa. Quinoa, Thank you. Quinoa, couscous, millet, um, whole grain cereal even, uh, any other grain product. um, Just one package. You can bring more, of course, if you want to, but we're just asking for one package per person to come uh, uh, And we're going to take that then and we're going to give it to our local food pantry as an offering to them, uh, 12 baskets to be specific. All right? Thank you for your attention. So next week, grain offering. Don't forget. There's some heavy stuff in here today. So let's just get right in. Um, Jerry and Sue Wright are asking for prayers for their brother-in-law, Jeff, who recently uh, discovered a mass on his colon and liver, um, asking for prayers as more tests to uh, determine the treatment plan. Um, Julie Kloosh is asking for prayers for the Langford family, who we haven't seen lately because they are struggling with COVID in their homes. So uh, some of the family had it last week. The rest has it today. Uh, And we just want to pray healing and health over the Langford family. Uh, Susan Stouffer is asking for prayers for her daughter, Jody, who has surgery this coming Wednesday afternoon. Um, She has complications from an autoimmune um, disease that she has uh, and in her fingers, and they they need to fix some of that. So uh, prayers for healing. She also struggles with some anxiety. So we want to pray for positive attitude and outlook over all of that. So prayers for Jody and the Stouffer family. Uh, the, the Mann family is asking for prayers for their niece, Samantha, who is having hip surgery um, this coming Wednesday as well. She's got a three-year-old and a six-year-old and has to be on crutches for, it says, 10 to 12 weeks. If you've had littles or have littles in your home, you know that that's hard as it is when you have two working hips. So prayers for recovery for Samantha. Um, And then the Murphy family is asking for continued prayers for Char, uh, Tanya's grandma. Uh, Char was diagnosed this week with MDS, which is a blood cancer. Um, They're still waiting on action plan and treatment plan for that. Uh, But please pray pray for Char, Tanya, and Pat. As you know, uh, Tanya and Pat just moved, relocated to Lansing, and Char is here in Kalamazoo, so that's been a struggle as well. So pray for that whole family as they deal with that. Um, Cheryl Mars is as thankful for God's care in answered prayers. So <laughs> after all that heavy, let's put it all to God, right? And, and thank him for his answered prayers. And then uh, one of our wonderful faithful from the first service, Sonia Newman, just says, praise God, I'm so very blessed. And even amidst the heavy, isn't it so amazing when we can say, thank you, God, I'm blessed. So will you pray with me? Father God, I confess that I have not loved you and been the perfect person that you want me to be. I confess with my whole heart that it's hard for me to say thank you, God, every day. Lord, I just ask for your healing hand to be part of all of these surgeries that I've named today that you can help each and every person that is struggling with a diagnosis but not the treatment yet, Lord. Calm their minds. Allow them to surrender it all to you because we know how hard that can be. 
Lord, I ask for you to continue to show yourself to those of us that need to see you plain and clear every day. Lord, I thank you for the blessings that you've put in my life and to the lives of those that are here in this room and watching us online. Thank you for showing up. We put all of these surrenders into your hands at Jesus' feet, Lord. Help us to remember that surrender tomorrow. <laughs> that we can continue to surrender because as humans we want to hold on to it. <laughs> and we need to lay it down. I thank you for what you've done for me and for the lives of those in this room every single day. I pray and I ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Christina. <clears throat> Let's all stand up. Let's worship the Lord together as we close this service.
thanks for being here today with us in worship. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. have a great day.